Hello, discrete math class, internet, etc. Here we are, back in the classroom. Woo woo, Tuesday, all by myself, late at night. Here was about, actually, it was about, say, an hour's worth of stuff that I somehow thought I was going to get to in class today, but well, that didn't happen. Uh, but here's something like, man, it takes like five minutes and I really, really wanted to do it. Um, I could just barely teach this and just tell you to read Gossett and that would be fine, uh, probably, uh, for most people, but, um, you know, for those who want a short lesson on the topic, here it is. Um, the topic is adjacency matrices, and this is, like, very important, uh, adjacency matrices. This is even something that you maybe learned. Uh, in some other class, um, this is a very basic kind of uh, uh, computer programming uh, idea. Um, I have even seen it in like basic, basic like Algebra 2 um, uh, textbooks as like a good motivation for learning matrices at all. In some ways it's a more fun and exciting and kind of modern in the sense of like 21st century reason to study matrices and matrix multiplication than the uh, historical reasons like um, Solving systems of equations. This is sort of more interesting and maybe more deep. Okay, getting right to it. Here's an example um, of a graph. It's a graph with four vertices labeled A, B, C, and D. And uh, it's a multigraph, um, so not a simple graph. And uh, <clears throat> we have a bunch of edges. This is a modified uh, version of, of an example that was in Gossip. And um, uh, here we see that there are seven edges. Uh, there are three edges between A and B, E1, E2, and E3. Uh, E4 connects B and C, E5 connects B and D, E6 connects C and D, and then there's E7, which is a loop. Uh, and now we simply want to capture uh, the number of um, uh, edges between uh, any two vertices. So um, that is captured here. This is what an adjacency matrix is. Um, it's a square matrix uh, whose dimensions are uh, n by n, where n is the number of vertices. Here I've labeled them A, B, C, D, and A, B, C, D uh, along the rows and columns, and it simply says for any two, uh, for any row A and column B, uh, in, in the row associated with A and the column associated with B, the number there is just the number of edges connecting those two vertices. So um, this matrix kind of captures, in a sort of a complete sense, um, how, uh, what the entire sort of structure of the graph is. It tells you uh, which uh, vertices are adjacent to which other, which other vertices and via how many edges. So, in fact, from this, if I'm not mistaken, you can just recover the entire graph. All the information of the graph is, like, stored. And so if this were more of a, um, a computer science kind of based uh, programming class, this would be one way in which you might store the graph. Uh, I think everything is contained there, though you might explore other ways of, of storing the information of a graph. Anyway, all uh, right, uh, there's one controversial uh, aspect, and that is how we treat these, oh, I should say a couple more things. One, this graph is symmetric. Uh, I think I'm using that term uh, correctly in that it um, uh, has sort of symmetry about its long diagonal, um, or, or main diagonal. In, well, this, specifically this diagonal. Uh, and, uh, of course, if it's a simple graph, then a vertex is either uh, adjacent to another, to another vertex or not. And so it will be a matrix of all ones and zeros. And there's probably, like, even a name for that. Uh, right. Well, uh, here is the graph, which I got from just looking at the, the vertices and counting the number of edges uh, connecting any two of them. Uh, the one part that's kind of interesting here is this two. Um, you will note that based on uh, what particular textbook of Gossett you happen to get assigned, um, this will be either a 2 or a 1. Uh, this is something which I believe he wrote as 1 and then caught as a typo. Um, there are not very, very strong reasons to do it one way or another. Um, you might think that this should just be a 1 because, after all, uh, this uh, entry in the row C, column C uh, spot uh, should just tell you how many edges there are between C and C, and there's just one edge between C and C. So that's a sort of an argument to making it um, one. There's all, the argument for making it two uh, seems uh, at first maybe a little bit obscure, um, 
Uh, and that is in somehow, like, going from C to C, there's almost sort of like two ways to do it. There's kind of going counterclockwise, and then there's going sort of clockwise. And um, uh, there, in the years past, we've had whole complicated discussions about why you might want to do it one way or another, and I think it's not completely standard that you necessarily do it one way or another, uh, I think was the end result that we came up with. Um, you just kind of fix a, a notation and stick with it. The argument for putting a 2 here is it's sort of, you get this sort of nice property uh, that uh, in any um, a row of the matrix, what you get is in fact just the degree of that vertex, and same in the column. So the degree of, of, vert, uh, of vertex A is 3 because there are sort of 3 edges coming out of A. And the degree of vertex B is 5 because there are, if you sum all the entries in row B, you get 5. And so here, uh, because we sort of care so much about the degree of a vertex, we're willing to sort of uh, force uh, loops to get counted twice um, uh, because we want the sum of the um, uh, numbers in this row C to be the degree of C, when the degree of C is definitely 4. Okay, this is an extremely uh, tediously presented lesson. Well, here it is, the adjacency matrix. Woo! What makes it so exciting? Well, there's this nice sort of fact, which is if you square this matrix, or in fact raise, raise this matrix to any power, uh, then you get something kind of interesting. So here, um, okay, multiplying two 4 by 4 matrices is not fun. I did this uh, off camera uh, very slowly and tediously by hand, and um, hopefully I, I did it correctly. Um, so you kind of almost can't tell any colors on the video, so I'll try not to use too many colors. But uh, where did these all come from? Well, I'm assuming that you know matrix multiplication. Everyone in this class learned it from, from me, probably. There might be one or two of you that sort of snuck by somehow. All right, well, uh, how do we get a, a number? So let's pick a particular uh, one that's kind of exciting. Say this number right here. Um, where did this 3 come from? Uh, no, let's actually avoid... Uh, well, let's avoid uh, C um, for the moment because it's kind of confusing. Let's go um, sort of... Uh, well, let's just go right to here. Okay. Um, so, uh, where did that number come from, that 3 right there? Uh, well, that's row 1, column 4, or it's, it's the entry in row... I'm just literally telling you how to multiply two matrices. It seems kind of silly. This is row 1, column 4. Um, so you get that by like taking like row 1 in the left matrix and column 4 in the right matrix. This is just A. This is also A. Um, and sort of performing this like 0 times 0 plus 3 times 1 plus 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0 thing. Okay, this has turned out to be a quite boring one. Um, let's kill that. Um, maybe actually just this very first entry is kind of interesting. Um, well, no, I take it back. Uh, I might as well do it. If I picked it, we should talk about it. So where is this coming from? What's, oh, what's the claim? I haven't even said the claim yet. The claim is that uh, each of the entries in this matrix, which is A squared, A times A, um, counts the number of walks of length 2 between those two vertices. And so if we're in row A, column D, uh, this is a 3, it means that there are somehow 3 walks of length 2 between A and D. And um, of course there are. Uh, I can go E1, E5, E2, E5, E3, E5. And um, sort of why does that kind of work? Well, if you see what we're sort of doing here is when we're performing the matrix multiplication algorithm, we're saying, okay, zero paths between A and A, and there are zero paths between A and A. Great. There are three paths between A and B times this number, which is the one path between B and D. So if there's zero path between A and B times the one path between B and D, then that's the number of paths from A to B to D. Uh, and then here we have zero paths from A to C, plus one path from C to D, zero paths from A to D times zero paths. All right. Uh, good. And so we get sort of three. Let's do another one uh, and see how this makes sense. Cha-cha, cha-cha. Okay, what's one? There were a couple that were like a little bit more exciting, such as maybe, um, maybe, 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 uh, I don't know, should we just go straight to like the, the, the 11 one? 
Where did this 11 come from? Well, uh, that's B to B. Uh, and where did we actually get this 11? Well, this comes from, uh, this is row 2, column 2. So this comes from multiplying row 2 by column 2. And um, what this is saying is, yo, take all the paths from uh, B to A uh, times all the paths from A to B. Well, that's going to be the paths from B to B. Because after all, if this number is the number of paths from B to A, and there are indeed three of them, E1, E2, E3, uh, and then there are three paths from A to B, uh, E1, E2, E3, then there should be, by sort of a simple counting principle, nine paths from B to B via A. And indeed there are, right? E1, 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 E2, uh, E1, E3, uh, and then like E2, E1, E2, 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 E3, and then like E3, 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 E2, E3, E1. Those, so that's what the 3 times 3 is. And the 0 times 0 is the fact that there are no paths from B to B. But now we get some more, right? We get this one path from B to C. Um, and there's one path from B, uh, or I guess, um, yeah, from B to C. And this is from C to B. So yeah, uh, which is just E4. So when you multiply the one path from B to C and the one path from C to B, you get the path walk of length 2. Uh, I'm using now path and walk interchangeably, probably shouldn't do that. Um, then you just get the walk uh, E4, E4, which goes from B to B. And I think exactly the same thing happens with B and D. Um, all right, I think we're kind of good. Um, this sort of explains, this is something a little bit less than a proof because I'm doing it only for the A squared case. But like, um, with the way to sort of really uh, think about this is, let's just do one more. Um, let's do one more. Uh, where something kind of exciting happens, uh, such as, I feel like the six case was sort of interesting. No, um, let's do maybe this. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, maybe this one here. From, so this is from C to D. So how many paths are there from C to D of length two? So we got that from doing this times this. And, um, well, uh, so this, there's this 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 1 times 0. And this, this 0 is, of course, from A to, um, or no, rather from C to A. So this is C to A. And this 0 is um, A to D. And so, what this is saying is there's 0 paths from C to A and 0 paths from A to D. So there are 0 paths from C to D. Th through A of length 2. Through A. Well, what does this say? This says row C column B. So this is from C to B. And this 1 is being multiplied by that 1. And that's B, D. So what this is saying is... There is one path from C to B and one path from B to D. So the product of those is that there's one path of length 2 from C to D. Um, I should be saying walk. Uh, finally, uh, what's this? Is the two paths from C to C. That's like E7 clockwise, E7 counterclockwise. So this is from C to C. There are two uh, walks. And then from uh, this number, it's been multiplied by this number, which is C, D. And so there are um, uh, two paths from two walks from C to C, one walk from C to D, and thus uh, there's the product of those uh, two walks of length two from C to D. And what are they? They're like, oh yeah, there's like basically like clockwise E seven E six and counterclockwise E seven E six. I think I moved my finger the wrong way. Um, and finally, this says there's one path from C to D. Um, and there are zero paths from D to D. So there are one times zero or zero paths walks from C to D via D. So if you add up the walks from C to D via A, the walks from C to D via B, the walks from C to D via C, and the walks from C to D via D, then that's the total number of walks of length two there are from C to D. All right, I think this is like an uh, extremely thorough explanation, probably over, over the top. 
Um, and uh, this is great because you can just keep doing this process, right? Once, um, if you multiply this by A again, you get A cubed, you get a new matrix, hopefully you should like use a calculator for this or something, if you're doing this at home, then what you get is a matrix which represents the number of distinct uh, walks there are uh, between any two vertices of length 3. And if you just let this go like out to like infinity or something, well you probably don't need to go all the way um, to infinity, um, then what you have is a matrix of connectivity. So if you have n um, vertices um, in your graph, and you want to know whether your graph is connected, a probably extremely inefficient way to do this is to say, well, between any two vertices, is there a walk or isn't there? Uh, well, uh, if, there is a, if there is a walk between any two vertices, then that walk is either of length 1, or length 2, or length 3, or length etc., etc., all the way up to n. The longest, if there exists a walk between two vertices, then the longest that walk could possibly be is n. And so if you take the adjacency matrix and raise it to the nth power, um, that will give you all the walks of length n between, uh, between two vertices. And I guess what do I do? Just like add them all up or something, right? Yeah, this is so ridiculously inefficient. Um, I guess it's even true, uh, I'm looking at the book now and cheating, that uh, the longest, I, I sort of misspoke, that the longest, if there are n vertices, then the longest uh, walk uh, between two vertices, if the graph is connected, would be n minus 1. And so if I add a plus a squared plus a cubed plus da 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 da, all the way up to a to the n minus 1, the sum of all of those matrices then, uh, if the graph is connected, uh, then there will be no zeros. And if there are still any zeros whatsoever in, uh, in the sums of all of the matrices, of all the powers of the adjacency matrix, then it must be that there's truly uh, no walk of any length between those two vertices, and so the graph is, is disconnected. Uh, all right! Anything else to say about this? No, I don't think so. Gossip proves it by induction. Um, goodbye.